The Talhurst End Podcast. Read the blog on thetalhurstend.com. Right, interview time. And this week I'm delighted to say I'm joined by a man who played for Reading during one of our most successful periods. He was a goalkeeper on the bench on the, the last time we played at the old Wembley is Simon Shepherd. Simon, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. You're over in America now. Uh, you're a goal, goalkeeping coach at Sacramento Republic, is that right? That's correct. Excellent. And we'll uh, we'll get to that bit of your career just shortly. But let's, let's start at the start then. Obviously, you're a professional footballer, but what was your earliest footballing memory? Well, I was very lucky because I was part of the um, I, I was part of the Lilith Shaw um, England National Soccer School. So from the basically from the age of fourteen, I was obviously um, at Lilith Shaw being coached by Dave Sexton and uh, and and um, those types of people. And uh, so I was very lucky from a very young age. I was surrounded by the best coaches at the time. Um, and so for me. Um, you know, I was very fortunate. I went to Wembley quite a few times with uh, with the England youth team. So um, those were my best moments and probably obviously the first time being um, at Wembley um, as an England schoolboy and beating Brazil 1-0, which obviously doesn't happen very often. So having that as one of my uh, main memories would be, uh, would be the first great memory for me. Lovely. Your first professional club then was Watford. How did that signing come about? Were you with, with, with Watford from an early age? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Going to Lillishaw, I was very fortunate that uh, I was able to uh, add a lot of a lot of clubs looking at me at that time, and uh, Watford was one of those progressive clubs that was very interested in bringing the youth youth through into the first team. So for me, that was one of the big uh, one of the big things for me because obviously the most important thing as a youth is you want to play in the first team, um, and I was very lucky I was able to do that um, at a young age. What uh, What do you remember about your debut? Who was it against, and uh, what was the score? Oh well, we won. I was lucky. I uh, I was uh, I was actually um, it was at Vicarage Road, and uh, we played Wolverhampton Wanderers. That was the old Steve Ball days. So uh, luckily, Bully didn't get one on that day on me. So um, it was uh, it was good. But he definitely gave me a good stamp on the foot, <coughs> rightly with the first corner. So you know, um, it was a obviously it was a great moment playing. You know, playing for the club that you uh, that you came through the youth ranks with, and uh, and winning three one. <coughs> It really doesn't get any better. Absolutely, and during that time as well, you, as you mentioned, you know, you're with the England set of squad. Is it right that you went to the, I think it's the international youth games at '93, and you were captained by uh, another man who'd gone on to play for Reading, Darren Caskey. What did you, yeah. uh, what did you remember at that time? Well, Darren Caskey actually was at Lillishaw with me as well, so I knew Darren from the England days anyway, out in out at Lillishaw. So um, when he came to the when he came to Reading, it was uh, it was great. He was a good driving partner. There was a big group of us at that time. There was like four of us. I think there was like myself, Lee Nogan, um, Darren Caskey, and uh, Trevor Morley. So uh, we uh. were very, we, we were lucky. We had a good car, <laughs> a good laugh on the way down to training. No, lovely stuff. And and from that, I said you spent the first sort of three, three or four years of your professional career at Watford, made a handful of appearances, just under twenty, and then you made the move to Reading. How did the move to uh, to Elm Park come about? Well, that all came about through uh, Colin Lee, because Colin Lee was my uh, was my youth team coach over at Watford at the time, and um, and uh, Colin was in contact with me about you know they only obviously only had Shaka at that time, so um, they needed a second goalkeeper, and uh, and that's when Colin reached out to me and and uh, was one obviously I was obviously getting some games at that time under Steve Perryman, so he uh, and and obviously having that little bit of experience helped. So um, and Colin obviously knew me as a young kid, so that kind of helped me as well so that's how it all came about what are your memories of that season obviously Reading did fantastically well finished it was our highest ever league place to that point came second in the league got all the way to Wembley for the playoff final unfortunately for yourself obviously you know Shaka was in phenomenal form and what was it like working with Shaka and just the general vibe around the club at that time oh I mean it was fantastic and um, you know if if, uh, if Anybody remembers it? It, it was a it was a, an amazing season. Um, something that I think even the Reading fans, you know, still still look look back on and dream about that. You know, we can you know sort of get get into that position again um, for the club. And and for me, it was it was great. Obviously, Shaka was a great guy. You know, obviously, I learned a lot. I knew I was coming in to be the number two, and, and I was happy with that because remember, I was only young at that stage. You know. I was only what 21, 22 at that stage. I mean, in, in this day and age, 
you know, that's very young for a goalkeeper. Absolutely. And any particular memories stand out from that year, other than obviously Wembley? Um, sure, of course. I mean, you know, um, for me, for me, um, you know, playing playing at playing at Elm Park was uh, was great because that was obviously the you know that I, I believe that was one of the last years that we were actually at Elm Park yeah. and uh, very historical moment there as well and uh, you know um, play, playing uh, you know playing playing for for the club at the, the the first game you ever play it's 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 always that memorable moment and then also the last one as well that you play um, you'll always remember it and I was very fortunate that Michael Jilks actually had a testimonial game as well that um, I that all the boys came back for and uh, that was that was a nice memorable one as well so. Yeah, as you mentioned, obviously Shaka moved on in that summer. The squad was really broken up after getting so close to the Premier League. Shaka moved on to Newcastle. That left you with the gloves um, and you lined up at the start of the season. But I think I think it's safe to say it didn't go exactly to plan. I think you picked up an injury as well at one point. And I think Brennan ended up using something silly like six or seven goalkeepers. In that's the right. end that year. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I think that's a record as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I think uh, it's a quiz question we're going to have to do one day if you can name them all. <laughs> but I mean, what for you? Obviously, you, you got your chance, and as I said, it, it didn't go quite to plan. What, what were your memories of that time, and what ultimately didn't work out for you? Well, I think the I think the big thing, um, especially like being in the role that I'm in, I'm in right now. Remember, I was only twenty. I was only like twenty three years old. You know, I, I was young. You know, and um, and one thing that I've learned more than anything um, of what what didn't happen as much was 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 the education was the, the the coaching behind it all you know and it's not just the coaching on the field it's the coaching off the field and there's more and more of that that needs to go on that makes players better you know you don't just go out there and play you obviously have the ability to play it's about what you do with them behind the scenes and that's one thing especially in the role that i'm in where i'm now working with young players you know you have to work with them not on their mental side of their game. And I think during those days, that's not really was one of those focuses. You know, it was more about winning games and, and, and uh, which obviously it always is, but what you do with the player off the field is just as important what you do on the field. Um, and at that time, we were obviously going through different management as well. Um, you know, new management um, that, that wasn't given that, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I said you were quite unfortunate. Said it was a, a baptism of fire, and I, I remember unfortunately there were a, a couple of mistakes. And I, I was quite young at the time, but I remember seeing you, you, it did look a lonely time for you. And I said there was there was no place to hide, and I said it, it couldn't have helped your confidence having a series of goalkeepers coming. I remember Bobby Mikhailov came in. Yeah, um, Nick Hammond came in. There yeah, was Nicky Hammond. <laughs> um, but, and, Jimmy Quinn won in goal for one bit, didn't he? <laughs> I think it was the game he, he, he broke your arm. Yes, I did. From. Yeah. I think that was the be that was the big that was the big thing because I think we played Manchester United the following day so um, that was one of the uh, not the following day the following week I think I was like a week away from playing against United which you know you obviously look back on as one of those things that never happened but um, you know um, I think that you're there to be tested you know and uh, and whether you, no matter how old you are you you know you got to rise above it and uh, you know it's definitely helped me moving forward in my career. Um, when you know, obviously, as a coach now. Yeah, I think uh, one of the more more memorable moments was was an off the field incident. I think. Am I right in saying that you had a spanner thrown at you from That's the Millwall right, fans? That's right. That was good old Millwall fans. Yeah, that, <laughs> that was a, that was another memorable moment. Yeah, and um, I mean, at the time, I wasn't even really thinking about it. But um, looking back on it, I think if he did hit me, I think I, I probably wouldn't be here talking to you today. So. Um, you know, um, obviously things have definitely changed. It, it was a pretty, it was a pretty big spanner, and uh, I believe the guy was like 15 or 16 years old from Millwall. So, um, um, you know, uh, it, I would, I don't like to say part of the game because that's kind of an old cliche thing to say, but um, something that is very unusual that uh, that happened, of course, and. Um, one that I'm glad I haven't seen again, you know? Absolutely. Well, as I said, your Reading career didn't go to plan. I think you left the club that I think it was either in the summer or early the following year. You had a couple yeah. of stops in non-league, but Reading was your last league club. I mean, as you said, for someone with your background, obviously going through the England ranks, playing football at a very early age for Watford and then Reading. I mean, what, 
what happened? Was it was it a conscious choice for you to sort of step away from the professional game, or or was it just circumstance? I mean, what sort of happened in the years? I think I think that? I think I think kind of to the circumstances and being a goalkeeper, it's always tough because a lot of clubs they do have their goalkeeper set, so you're looking for an injury or you're looking for um, a move, you're looking for something to shake out so that you get an opportunity to get back in. Um, and quite honestly, I mean, I didn't really know this at the time, but I think it was probably the best thing that actually happened to me because um, it definitely, you know, it definitely makes you appreciate what you have. And it's not like that I didn't appreciate what I had, but it gets you to re refocus your priorities and, and really sort of look at, you know, how the game is very different from the pro game to the amateur game. Um, but it also gave me an opportunity because remember, I've been kind of institutionalized in a way from the age of sort of 14 years old to be around the professional game. So when that then wasn't an option, um, I was able to, you know, finally, you know, get into an office and start doing some work as well as as well as work as well as playing on the side. So um, it was kind of the best of both worlds. But I do know, um, I do remember consciously in my head um, when I decided to make the transfer over to California, it was pretty straightforward. I was burnt out. I was done. Um, and so I was very, I was, I was kind of happy to get away. Yeah. What sort of, why did you move over there? So what, what was the immediate transition then from stepping away from the game well, in England to uh, ending up in America? Yeah. I mean, basically, um, what, what happened was I actually started working for a Deco employment services. And at the time they, they were the largest temp agency in the world. And, um, I got a great opportunity to move to San Francisco, um, and work on, um, work in one of the local branches here and just carrying on the great work that I was doing in the corporate headquarters in Boreham Wood. Um, so I was very lucky that ADECO gave me that opportunity and uh, gave me an opportunity to come to California. And um, so for me, it was great that I could actually get away and do the stuff that typically I wasn't allowed to do, you know, you know, riding motorcycles and <laughs> snowboarding and things like that, which, you know, we obviously aren't allowed to do when we're professional athletes. Sounds know? like you would have gone well with a future ready goalkeeper, Marcus. Hanneman yeah uh, no, no for that sort of uh, sort of thing as well but then so what, what led you then back to football I said you're now a goalkeeping coach with Sacramento uh, did they reach out to you did you go to them how did that one come yeah around? basically um, I had actually started my own goalkeeping um, I actually had my daughter and um, I was a stay-at-home dad for a long long time and um, you know I actually got uh, got invited out to come and just try and work with some kids they found out about my background um, and it just basically started from there all of a sudden, you know, I was doing like, you know, just doing private p personal sessions on the side, um, working with local kids in the area and got myself a, 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 a reputation around here for, you know, local, local teams and then started working with, uh, with a Granite Bay club, um, in the area and, um, and coached some teams and did stuff like that. And then, um, last season, um, the Sac Republic came in and, um, when they said that they were going to start this, um, that was that really sort of got my uh, got my juices flowing again for the pro for the professional game again, and uh, and that's why I you know I kind of reached out and at that time it was kind of they were looking just to you know just to try and form some sort of you know we started with nothing we had you know go I remember going into the first like three or four you know, three or four weeks of them actually officially coming out. We had like three or four players. We had zero players. So um, from there, it was great. Um, you know, I got an opportunity to really look at some great goalkeepers. And last season, I was very fortunate to work with Jake Gleason, who came from the Portland Timbers um, and also is a New Zealand international. Um, and um, I managed to help him through and, and um, you know, um, managed to have an unbelievable season. Yeah, you guys finishing high up in the league. I'm right in saying that the league that you're in at the moment is, is it right? It's the third tier in the States no, it's or, a, or is it the second? It's the second, second tier. tier. Yes, yeah, so yeah. it's kind of like MS, MLS and then U, then USL. The USL yeah. right now is it's definitely taken a lot of transitions. It's looking, um, you have a lot of, um, there's no reserve league over here for the, for the MLS team. So what they're starting to do is starting to incorporate a lot of the reserve teams into this league so it is becoming a stronger league um and uh, and it's definitely a feeder for the mls for sure 
Yeah, the MLS are receiving a lot of attention over here. Obviously, a lot of big names heading over there, like Steven Gerrard, Frank Lampard. They've just signed a deal with Sky Sports, and more people than ever are, are able to actually watch it. I mean, what is the standard like? You've obviously seen it develop over the past few years. If you were comparing it to the sort of standard in England, what sort of stage do you think it's reached now? The, the MLS? Yeah. I think I, I think the MLS has really... I, the MLS has really been established by David Beckham. I mean, David Beckham has been phenomenal for for the sport over here in the US. I mean, more kids more kids are playing it than ever um, it, over here, and um, it's uh, it's definitely going to be it's definitely the up and rising sport for every kid to play. Um, and I'd probably I'd probably say you know the standard the, the standard is is um, is definitely getting better because of the influx of more European players. I mean, I'll probably say it's definitely, you know, it's definitely around the championship to the first division level. I think it's, uh, you know, depending on each team, because, of course, um, you know, it's all about, unfortunately, how much money you've got, what you've got, how you can bring players in. Can you afford to bring them in and, yeah. uh, and everything else? But it's definitely growing. Absolutely. And what about yourselves and your team's prospect for this season? How are you shaping up? Well, we're looking, we're looking good. We're looking good right now. Um, obviously, you know, first first season in, we win the league. Um, nobody expected us to do that. You know, highest attendance. I mean, we, you know, we have more season ticket tickets than the than the Sacramento Kings, which is the NBA team. Here. Wow. Um, and you know, um, we we literally just played a friendly several weeks ago, um, and we got twenty thousand people show up, and we could have sold another ten. I mean, it's it's pretty remarkable. The, the, the city here is just uh, really taken on the Sac Republic here. So um, we're extending our stadium every you know every year. We've we're we're actually having to delay our home opener because our stand is uh, our stand's not going to be ready. So um, yeah, a lot of people are coming. So yeah. it's great for the city. Fantastic. It's, it was great when you're delaying because you've got too many fans rather than not enough. Co a couple of questions then before we let you go. And thanks very much for your time again. I'll start with, are there any players from your Reading days that you're still in contact with? Anybody that, that you still keep in touch with? Um, you know, I've, um, I've, I've actually, um, in not directly, but uh, yeah. you know, when you're in the game, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of hard not to, you know. I think I'm keeping more in contact more with the more with the Watford guys because yeah. um, I was there a lot longer. Um, Reading, obviously, there was a lot of turnover and, and um, you know players coming and going a lot more. And um, but definitely from the Watford days, I've been, you know, um, Darren Baisley is actually in. Um, he's with the obviously the New Zealand under twenty team, so that was always great because obviously I had Jake that I was always, um, you know, he was always asking about him. So um, it was great. And then I came, I actually came back over last Easter and uh, and actually um, went up and watched a couple of training sessions with Kenny Jacket and Joe Gallon, who oh, I also played with up in uh, with Watford. So it's been great. You know, I mean, obviously, I, I, I keep in touch with people as I can, but it's tough. You know, obviously, I'm, I'm over here in California and, um, you know, it's uh, there's a bit of a bit, bit of a time difference. Yeah, it's all right. Most of them are radio pundits now anyway. Aidy Williams and uh, Mick Goodin are on uh, BBC Radio Berkshire every week. So uh, you can keep oh, in touch with them. So you can get away from it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And then just finally, obviously you're, you're a busy man. You've got plenty on. But Reading, since you've left, we've been in the Premier League a couple of times. I said just last night reaching uh, our first FA Cup semi-final for years. And what have you made of the progress of the club on and off the field since you left? Well, I think it's been, I mean, especially for me, like I said, I mean, they were moving from Elm Park. So whenever you're moving into a new stadium, it was always going to be tough. Um, and I thought they weathered it very, very well. And um, uh, I, I think I think overall, I think Reading of, um, you know, it's obviously a score I always look out for um, and, and I'm always interested in. And um, I think Reading, I mean, overall, that they, they, they've, they've got a, now a great, good foundation. And, um, and at the end of the day, like all clubs, it's about, progressing is about building building on what you've got and in this day and age it is always going to be about your youth and bringing bringing good young players through um because you know these big clubs obviously have the money that they can just go and buy anybody and i, I think it's i think it's great for reading that they've really established themselves very well um and keeping themselves in you know the highest tier that they can and keep pushing for the premier league again and i'm sure that's what all the reading fans want is to get back in the big time again Absolutely. Well, Simon said thank you very, very much for giving us your time. Best of luck with the season and uh, we'll follow, follow the Sacramento's progress carefully over the next year or so. Thank you very much, Dan. Take care, Simon. Time, guys. Take care. Cheers. Bye-bye.
Thanks. Bye bye. The Talhurst End Podcast. Read the blog on thetalhurstend.com.